All right, it's Andy here with the Fence Post Vinyl Channel and I have an update from Bandbox. If you are a customer, you most likely received this as well if you have an outstanding order or something along those lines. So let's dig in and see what they said and discuss what might be coming down the pipeline. First off, if you are unfamiliar, Bandbox, the vinyl retailer who tends to press reissues, limited editions, and so forth has gone bust. A few months ago, they announced that they were no longer a company. And I had a video on it talking a little bit about what it meant and what we could potentially expect. You can check out that video down in the comments. What did Bandbox say? The title of Bandbox's email is motion to approve sale of band box assets. So we know that they are looking to liquidate everything they have. And of course that means all of the records that other people have ordered that they never fulfilled, records that had been produced but never fulfilled. Here's an expansion on that title. Bandbox has filed for court approval of the sale of band box assets and the distribution of proceeds. And they state the following. As you know, Bandbox filed an assignment for the benefit of creditors. And if you are not quite sure what that means, check out the video I linked to at the end of this video where I talk a little bit about what that is and how it differs from bankruptcy. The assignee has now entered into an agreement to sell the assets of Bandbox. The assignee has filed a motion requesting that the court approve the sale, the distribution of net proceeds, and the final report and discharge of the assignee, the assignee in this case being the uh, owners of or former owners of Bandbox. Linked at the bottom of this email, you will find the documents filed in this case. The court has scheduled a hearing on this for June 6, 2024. As part of the sale, the purchaser, Houghton Elevator Company, LLC, has agreed to facilitate the fulfillment of certain of the prepaid orders outstanding with Bandbox. To that end, Houghton has issued the following statement. We at Houghton know firsthand how upsetting Bandbox's cease in operations has been. We diligently worked with Lighthouse Management Group, which was the company that they uh, had the assignment for the benefit of creditors under as opposed to the bankruptcy. We diligently worked with Lighthouse Management Group to reach this agreement and are well positioned to make this right. Upon approval, Vinyl Box, our partner will begin the process to ensure customers receive any available vinyl orders that were originally placed with Bandbox. Further information from Houghton Elevator Company LLC is available at vinylbox.co and bandbox at vinylbox.co. What does this mean for you, the customer who has been diligently and agonizingly waiting for your orders and I gotta say, I am one of you as well. I ordered three of the four albums they repressed from The Long Winters, and those never arrived. The specific language that Bandbox used in this email is a little interesting. Hot and Elevator Company through Vinyl Box has agreed to facilitate the fulfillment of certain of the prepaid orders outstanding with Bandbox. There's no clarification on what of certain means. Does that mean that anything that Bandbox had on hand? Most likely, most likely anything in Bandbox's own possession, so long as they have that quantity available, will be shipped out to people who placed those orders. What does that mean for people who pre-ordered stuff like myself? I happen to know that the Long Winters LPs were indeed pressed. John Roderick, the frontman of the Long Winters, had mentioned that on his Instagram page. But will those be released to Vinyl Co. to allow for the sale of that? Who actually owns those records? If there's a whole quantity of albums that were pressed and they're sitting in a warehouse somewhere unable to be fulfilled, who actually owns those? If Bandbox hasn't paid, it could potentially be that the people who manufactured them own those records. It's a toss up as to whether or not Houghton Elevator Company and Vinyl Box will actually get those records 
from the manufacturer, that is to be determined. As we dig into some of these legal documents, and I have not done a full due diligence of the entire thing, I can see that Lighthouse Management, who was overseeing that assignment for the benefit of creditors, reached out to numerous different parties to attempt to sell the assets of Bandbox. And right here in the first document on page four, it says that the buyer offered to purchase the assets free and clear of liens for a purchase price of $165,000. Now that is buying all of the assets of Bandbox, my understanding. And under paragraph 18, it says, in addition to the purchase price and surrender of the note to the assignee, the buyer has agreed to assume certain liabilities which are detailed in exhibit three of the APA. In assuming those liabilities, the buyer has agreed to deliver more than 8,400 albums from the purchased assets to over 4,300 customers who have previously paid for those orders. Lighthouse also learned that the company, Bandbox, had accepted orders and payments over a period of several months from approximately 6,000 customers located in over 40 countries, but had not delivered those orders. In my last video, when I was talking about it being unlikely that you would receive your orders, I might have been wrong. I know for myself, I have moved since placing my order last fall for the long winters. So I definitely plan to reach out to Bandbox at vinylbox.co for a little bit more information. Whoa, 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 stop the tape. What is going on? You're wearing a different shirt. Yes, I know, viewer, I am wearing a different shirt. It's the next day and I am just chiming in very briefly and you're gonna wanna stick around because I actually got some communication back. So stick around for that. So they buy it for 165,000 and as you continue down this document, you see that, well, the assignee also understands that First Bank and Trust has a claim of approximately $255,000. So they are essentially in the hole quite a bit. This also means there's a little bit of bad news. Because Bandbox didn't fulfill its obligations to its customers, its manufacturers, and its vendors, and the bands, and all of that, and because Bandbox owes First Bank $255,000, the document that I'm reading here states that the assignee believes that the distribution of the net proceeds and the note will not be sufficient to satisfy the outstanding balance of First Bank. Accordingly, the assignee does not believe that any other creditors will receive a distribution. As such, it is unnecessary to have a claims process in this action. This is extremely unfortunate. Hey, it's future Andy chiming in once again, and this time I wanted to talk a little bit about something I didn't really specify in the original take of this video. And um, now that I've got my Smarty Pants Smith shirt on, I, I feel I can touch on it a little bit better. The bank is the first lien holder, uh, and my understanding of how this works is um, lien holders are, are, there's usually a first priority lien, and then there's secondary and tertiary and etc. And feel free if you have more legalese than me to uh, touch on it in the comments. And again, this can differ probably between states and between um, different industries and stuff like that too. And if you really want to know more, uh, do the digging yourself and uh, or consult a lawyer. The person holding all the debt, uh, when they sell their assets in this kind of situation, the money goes to the first lien holder until that money is paid off and then it kind of cascades down the chain because the bank is the first lien holder and the sum of the money doesn't necessarily cover it. Uh, that's why they are saying what they are saying because legally based on how the system in this country works, it would be paid all to them and then move on to the next in line and so forth on down the chain. It really sucks for anyone involved, more so for all the other people who Bandbox owes money to. These other companies are essentially getting screwed out of 
any ability to recoup any kind of expenses based on what uh, they've accrued, which is all the more important to support your small businesses, small manufacturers who produce vinyl, support them, support your distributors, support your bands, support your labels. And that's one reason why personally, I absolutely love vinyl records. So there are a few of the updates on Bandbox and what has been going on with that. So if you got one of these emails and you have a little bit more legal know-how than I do, feel free to drop some additional insights into the comments below. Let's try to keep it as much as possible to facts and what you actually understand about it. I'm trying to do a little bit of that myself and not kind of fly off the cuff with opinions and things along those lines. So if you'd like a little bit more information on this, I'm actually gonna copy the uh, the links. I'm gonna copy the text from the email and I'm gonna put it in my Substack Down in the description, you can actually go and you can subscribe for free to my Substack. You'll get a bigger dive into my personal connection with albums and stuff that I cover right here on the channel. I hope to see you there. Okay, as I promised, I would share a little surprise at the end, Some something that I was really not expecting. It, it actually did not take an extremely long amount of time before I got a response. And um, I would say to the tune of maybe a couple hours tops. Really, the whole thing was about me changing my address and probably should have said, hey, you know, like, also, could you give me an idea of, uh, is the Long Winners part of this thing that might actually get sent out to people. So here, here's what they said. Thanks for the quick outreach. We're still working through our plans leading up to the hearing to finalize everything. You'll have a chance to update your address prior to us shipping anything out. And that's in bold right there. We won't have access to Bandbox's former systems prior, so please do reach out again if you have any issues updating your address prior to it shipping, hopefully this summer. Now that actually gives us a hopeful timeline for some of this latent orders going out. My guess is their email is gonna be bombarded with you know hundreds if not thousands of customers reaching out to ask if they are part of that order. Based on this response, I honestly think that Vinyl Box and Houghton Elevator Company, which is just such a weird association. I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking that's kind of a weird association, but hey, weirder things have happened, are, are really honestly wanting to do what's best for the customers. And to that point, I'm sure they are wanting to do what's best for uh, the other vendors and stuff like that who were part of this big uh, fiasco that is Bandbox is closing. Uh, unfortunately, there's only so much that you can do in, in a scenario like this, that they are actually doing anything to try to make it right with the customers who purchased, um, I, I think actually says something. Next, if you wanna kinda see where all of this came from, check out this video up here where I talk a little bit about what that assignment for the benefit of creditors is and means and how that differs from bankruptcy in particular, how it relates to Bandbox. Anyways, as one person said many moons ago and someone more recently, Gary, this dude is a damn nerd. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl channel, and I'll see you in the next video.